pleasure to be here as a proud North Dakotan. And how can I not be proud of a state whose crest reads strength from the soil? And it is through that soil that I believe we can come together and find common ground for common good. I have the good fortune now that I spend 275 plus days a year traveling all over the world. I'm literally on hundreds of farms, ranches, and landscapes every year. And unfortunately, I have to tell you, I have not stood on a single one, including my own, that's not degraded. However, the good news is we have the knowledge to regenerate these landscapes for the common good of all. As I travel around, I see many challenges that are facing humanity today. It's not uncommon for most soils to only be able to infiltrate less than a half of an inch of rainfall per hour, when they should be infiltrating well over 20 inches per hour. That rainfall then leads to, and runoff leads to many other issues. It's not uncommon for us to see flooding in most major streams, rivers, lakes. That's at a large economic detriment to those involved. We also see issues with water quality. Unfortunately, as that runoff leaves fields, golf courses, leaves our city lots, it takes with it chemicals, pesticides. We also see increased drought and desertification. Worldwide, we're seeing desertification increase at an alarming rate. You know, centuries ago, there was very few areas in the world that are desertified. That's no longer the case. The, what the results of this are, it's negatively affecting not only farmers, ranchers, but rural communities and economies. And it's having a negative impact on human health. Take a look at the current human health crisis. ADD, ADHD, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, autoimmune diseases, cancer. All of these things are affecting nearly each and every family. The good news, though, is there's one conduit that has the ability, at least in part, to positively address all of these issues, and that is regenerative agriculture. Through regenerative agriculture, we can truly find common ground for common good. So let's define regenerative agriculture. The definition that we like to use is farming and ranching in synchrony with nature to repair, rebuild, restore, and revitalize ecosystem function, beginning with all life in the soil and moving to all life above the soil. Now, in order to regenerate landscapes, it does not take a rocket science like those we heard from today. What it does take is simple knowledge of time-tested ecological principles. There are six principles that we need to apply in order to regenerate landscapes at scale. They are, number one, you need to know your context. I tell people there's a reason bananas don't grow in North Dakota. <laughs> They're out of context. Unfortunately, today we're using uh, many crop species, many livestock out of their context, and it's having a negative detriment to our soil ecosystem. The second principle is to minimize disturbance. In other words, let's not use as much chemicals, fertilizers, pesticides, fungicides. I'm not saying we need to totally eliminate them, but we can, and let's reduce the tillage. If you're a home gardener, one of the worst things you can do for getting highly nutrient-dense vegetables in your garden is to till that soil, and I'll explain more coming up. The third principle is cover and armor the soil surface. Walk into the forest, walk out on our beautiful North Dakota prairies. Where do you see bare soil? Chances are the only place you see bare soil is where mankind's actions have caused them to occur. You need to keep the soil covered. Fourth principle is that of increasing diversity. 
Diversity of plants, diversity of animals, diversity of insect. Nature abhors a monoculture. Ecosystems do not function properly with monocultures. Fifth principle, keep living roots in the soil. Those plants collect that solar energy, then through photosynthesis, that carbon compounds are pumped into the soil to feed biology, the very biology that brings nutrients to the plants and critical nutrients to us in the food we eat. And the sixth principle is to integrate animals. Ecosystems do not function properly without animals and insects. They're an important part of the landscape. And those six principles, if you adopt them, drive the four ecosystem processes. The energy cycle, sunlight, photosynthesis. The nutrient cycle, plants exuding those carbon compounds into the soil to attract biology. And that biology, in running its life cycle, feeds the plants the nutrients they need. Most people do not realize that 95% of the nutrients a plant needs to grow occur naturally in the atmosphere. In order to bring that into the soil, we need to grow a diverse community of living plants. The water cycle, it's the interaction between plants and microbiology that build soil aggregates that allow water to infiltrate into the soil. And then the fourth process is that of biodiversity. We're losing biodiversity at an alarming rate all over the world. We need to implement the principles so we can heal the processes. Quickly, here's some pictures of it in action. We're planting vegetables, no-till, into a field. That was a cover crop that was rolled down to allow us the armor on the soil surface. Here's another picture of that soil armor, where we had a diverse mix of living cover crops capturing solar energy, rolled them down, and then no-tilled corn into that armor on the soil. One of the things you're going to hear more and more about is polyculture cash crops. Instead of harvesting a monoculture, we're growing species together. On our farm, we grow a combination of oats, peas, flax, and barley all together. Harvest them together, we see an increase of 40 to 60 percent in production with zero synthetic inputs of any kind. Living roots, take a look, your eyes are. Uh, automatically pull to that flower, but look at that picture. You can actually count 20 different species of plants there. Think of, as is above ground, so is below. And we need to integrate animals. We have recorded scientifically that animals grazing were able to sequester 12.9 tons, metric tons, CO2 equivalent of carbon per hectare per year. No other form of agriculture or means has to do that. If you want to mitigate climate change, we need to integrate grazing animals. If you want to desertify this planet, remove the animals from the landscape and it'll desertify quickly. We want to grow diversity in life. And with that diversity in life, we want insects. Dr. Jonathan Lundgren, world-renowned uh, entomologist told me that for every insect species that's a pest, there's 1,700 that are beneficial or indifferent. Why do we focus on killing that pest? Why not just provide the home and habitat for the beneficials? They will keep the pests in balance. Take a look at these soils. Three years adopting the principles, implementing them to drive the processes, we were able to change that farm field that quickly. Take a look at this photo. In the foreground, that pet of soil, that's over 12 years of no-till. The pet in the background is 25 plus years, not only no-till, the integration of cover crops, livestock, diverse cash crops. The soil in the foreground can infiltrate four-tenths of an inch of moisture per hour, 1.7% organic matter. The soil in the background can infiltrate, scientifically proven, 32 inches of rainfall per hour, 9.4% organic matter. Now, what I'm not telling you here is these two fields are side by side. Ask the governor. He was there. He saw it, right? 
The only difference between these two fields is management, or as I like to call it, stewardship. Your farm, your ranch, your garden, your community is a direct reflection of you. Okay, now, not only will that healthy soil drive an increased profitability, here's what else it'll do. The human health connection. Take a look at those two eggs. Which would you rather eat? One of those was from free-range land hens raised on healthy soil. The other was a from a conventional mindset. There's some groundbreaking research being done by Dr. Stefan Van Vliet and his team of scientists. What they're doing, they're using a mass spectrometer. They can identify over 2,300 different phytonutrient compounds. And it's those phytonutrient compounds that feed our gut microbiome. So they're testing the soil, the water, the biodiversity, the insects, the animals, the plants on farms that are using these regenerative practices, comparing it to neighboring farms that are not. What they have found is staggering. Vitamins, up to 64% higher vitamins from the regenerative farms. Fatty acid profiles, 239% higher. Oxidative stress markers, 67% lower. And the list goes on and on. We need to get to a place where we're using food as preventative medicine. There's an increasing awareness out there from consumers. There's an increasing awareness from consumers who are really beginning to understand the soil health, plant health, animal health, human health connection. We need to do this, not only for ourselves, but for our children. But we also need this because in so doing, we're going to address climate issues. We're going to pull carbon out of the atmosphere. We're going to address water quality, water quantity issues. We're going to improve that nutrient density. We're going to increase biodiversity across the landscape and a whole host of other positives. You see, if we focused on regenerative agriculture and healing our soils, we will truly heal our soils, our farms, our families, and our futures. Thank you.